G'day guys, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Neds and with State of Origin in the rear view mirror, I thought I'd just go through my best 17 side from this Origin Series, so based solely on performances during this Origin Series. Now obviously, there's a number of different ways you could do this, influence on the series, how they played across the three games and whatnot. I've sort of taken a bit of a mix of all of them to come up with my side. Very keen to hear your thoughts. Obviously, it is pretty New South Wales dominant as we did win the series. We won the two games to one. The first game we had a player sent off and whatnot. So it is pretty New South Wales dominant, but I think there are a few Queenslanders in in there that deserve to be in there. So we're going to go through those as well. So let's kick off. Our all state of origin, our all-star side, you could call it, for 2024 off the back of the Origin Series, brought to you by Neds. Go and check out my profile on the Neds app, following with all of our bets each and every weekend. At fullback, I have gone for Dylan Edwards. This was an absolute no-brainer. Uh, he only played two games during this series, didn't play in game one, which they lost, but I thought game two and game three, he was fantastic. Uh, MOM in game three. Game two is Bruin as well, set up a try. I think he scored another one. He was fantastic. Dylan Edwards ran for an absolute stack of meters. He was meant to be there in game one one. On top of that, he replaced the New South Wales captain and one of the all-time great New South Wales players in James Tedesco. So Dylan Edwards, when you're com- talking about the fullbacks that were competing for this spot, realistically, Reese Walsh didn't play in the first game, was pretty rattled in the second, didn't do a heap in the third either. So I think Dylan Edwards, he gets this one in a knockout victory. And what a reward for a guy like Dylan Edwards. He's been so good for so long. Great to see him. Uh, it all paid dividends for him in the Origin Arena. Wingers, once again, I don't think I could go past the New South Welshman. Brian Toe, uh, I've said for a long time, I think he's going to be the greatest winger we've ever seen. He's still at a very, very young age, realistically. He's achieved so much. He's got so much more in front of him. I do think it'll be interesting to see how his body holds up because what the, the you know what he's putting his body through week in, week out for all these years on the trot. Uh, it is going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But I think what he's already achieved, I think he's one of the greatest wingers we've ever seen. I think he will go down as probably the best winger we've seen, Brian Toe. So having an incredible career this origin series probably didn't have the huge highlights that he's had in previous ones and stuff but he just gets through so much work every single time and you look at Zach Lomax and the numbers he had throughout this origin series how much work he got through I think you always need to keep in mind that the other winger to Brian Toto gets through a lot of work because teams refuse to kick the ball to Brian Toto uh, I think you saw that in that origin in this origin series once again but he shits in there uh, Zach Lomax he has to be on the other wing what an origin series I uh, I said last week and I stand by it that if you weren't going to give the Wally Lewis medal to Angus Crichton, I think Zach Lomax came up with enough big moments throughout this series to get it. Uh, scored tries in the first and second game. Third game he didn't, but I thought the third game is where he really stood up. Penalty goal from the sideline, conversion from the sideline. Uh, the play where he took Reese Walsh over the sideline, a, hu- a massive momentum swing there. Uh, you know, everyone talks about the try that Mitch Moses scored and what a moment it was. The only reason why Mitch Moses had that field position because Zach Lomax earned the penalty on first or second tackle at the other end. Uh, the short dropouts they went for that he came down with. It was just big moment after big moment after big moment for Zach Lomax. And how often do you talk about guys in the air and how good they are and how often do they actually deliver those big moments? Zach Lomax, he essentially had four or five opportunities throughout this Origin Series. In game one, he had one opportunity. He came down with it and he scored. Game two, one opportunity. Came down and scored with it. Scored another try as well in that game. And in game three, he didn't come down with any of them, but he earned a penalty or got a turnover or something on every single chance. And I mean, you just can't ask for any more than that from Zach Lomax. We're all worried about him throwing the loose pass, the loose offload, coming up with an error. Honestly, he didn't put his foot wrong in the entire Origin Series. So, Zach Lomax, I think he's established himself as uh, an Origin player moving forward for the New South Wales Blues. And honestly, if you said to me who had a big Origin Series, Toho or Lomax, I can't believe I'm saying it, but I think i go with Zach Lomax. He was enormous, so he gets a spot there. Centers. Stephen Crichton, he was originally picked at left centre. We wanted him at right centre all along. Obviously, the Sue Lee incident forced uh, Stephen Crichton to go over there, and he le- never left the right edge, uh, and he was fantastic throughout this whole Origin series. When you look at the career of Hamiso and what he's done throughout his Origin career and how many tries he scored, Critter was given the, the opportunity to lock him down. I think he scored one try in Game 2. Game 3, he was kept very quiet. Game 1, he played fullback, so Critter wasn't really on him. Fullback against uh, 12 players, but look, I thought Stephen Crichton, he was fantastic throughout this whole Origin series and he just had to be there. The other center spot's interesting. Now, you can obviously say, okay, 
the New South Wales centers, all of them were great, except for Suwali, obviously, only played the seven minutes. But Bradman Best came up with huge moments in game three to win it for them. Latrell Mitchell came up with huge moments in game two. And I think Latrell Mitchell, I think it's sort of underappreciated right when they were sort of down and out and their backs were against the wall, a, a figure like Latrell Mitchell walked into this squad with squad with his sort of swagger. And I think it had a huge impact on the team moving forward. For me, though, this is going to be my first Queenslander I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick Hamiso. Now, he played in all three games. He absolutely killed us in game one. Granted, he was playing fullback. Uh, he was against 12 players, but Hamiso can only go, uh, go up against who he's up against. If he's on the field, if he's not on the field in that game, do Queensland win it? Probably. Uh, but he it was definitely just his speed that killed us. He came up with some very good plays in the second half of game two as well. For me, I just think that Hamiso playing a role in those two games, a big role in those two games, probably gets him in over the other guys just playing the one individual game. So a bit of a controversial one there. The argument is that Latrell Mitchell came in and turned the tide. The argument is that Bradman Best came up with one of the biggest plays of the Origin series. 100%, I won't push back on anyone that chooses any of those two boys over Hamiso, but he's going to be my first Queenslander. I'm going to put in there Hamiso at centre. The halves. I mean, what are we even talking about here? Jerome Luai, uh, he was tremendous throughout all three games. Uh, he, you know, I, I love, I said it last week, I just love the way that Jerome Luai went up to Suncorp Stadium, kicked the door in and said, I'm here to win. I don't care who you are, what you've achieved. I, don't, I do not care. I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to start fights with you. I'm going to wave at the crowd. I'm going to do everything to show you no respect whatsoever to get this job done. Uh, and even outside of that stuff, I thought his kicking game was fantastic throughout this Origin Series had a couple of try assists uh, obviously in the second game but also game three who comes up who comes up at the moment to break origin apart it's Jerome Luai gets the ball off an offload looks up sees a tie Jeremiah and I in front of him and just goes this is my moment I'm going to back myself goes through for me it's what he does once he goes through, though. He's looking for support. He, you know, he plays the tempo game. He slows up, which draws Reese Walsh in, allows Bradman Best to catch up. Uh, it was a hard pass to land to. Bradman Best did well to catch it, but also a very hard pass to deliver between bodies at different paces when you've got a split second to think about it. A loud crowd like that. He probably could He could probably hardly even hear Bradman Best calling for the ball. Uh, Jerome Luai, a huge Origin series, and he is uh, definitely the best 5'8 in Origin this year. Halfback. Obviously, Nico Hines played game one for New South Wales uh, for Queensland. Daly Cherry Evans got man of the match in that game. Uh, was pretty quiet in the games after that, but Mitchie Moses. Uh, I think it's the great uh, – since Joey, it's the greatest individual performance I've seen from a New South Wales halfback in game two. He was simply unbelievable. And then game three, he comes up with a big play. Kicked well throughout the game. His long kicking game was fantastic. Moses – He's, he's an absolute must at halfback here in this team. Uh, we got a little bit criticised after game one when we called for Mitch Moses to come in. We said he has to be the halfback. We need a genuine halfback. A lot of people, and fair enough to him, sort of said, oh, Nico Hines, it was against 12. It's a rough audition. You've got to give him another chance. Mitch Moses was always the guy to come in and do a job here, uh, and he came in and he absolutely nailed it. So he's our halfback. So our back line, Edwards. Toto and Lomax on the wings. Centers, we've got Critter and controversially, we've got Hamiso. Uh, Luai at 5'8", Moses at 7. Let's get into the forward pack. Payne Haas. Huge Origin Series. He was enormous in this one. I feel like it's a coming of age uh, Origin Series for Payne Haas. So he's the automatic pick in the front row. His front row partner, when you're looking at the starting front row forwards from this Origin Series, for me personally, I couldn't go with Jake Trevojevic. I thought he was a fantastic leader throughout the series and whatnot. You know my feelings on that. But you can't pick him in the best team of Origin when he's playing 25 minutes per game. For me, I'm going to pick a second Queenslander here. I'm going to go Ruben Cotter. He played about 70 minutes in each and every one of these games. He was tough as nails. He never folded. He never gave in. He just went out at all origin series. He might not have had the huge stats, the huge highlights and all that, but I just saw Ruben Cotter. He just went at this origin series the entire time, and I've got so much respect for this guy. As you know, uh, this is why I wanted him in origin all those years ago. A tremendous player, Ruben Cotter. He sneaks into the front row with Payne Haas for me. Um, hooker. Look, obviously the Queensland boys, uh, I think Ben Hunt, he had an absolute blinder in uh, game one. He was sensational, but... 
Reese Robson throughout the whole Origin Series, defended well, didn't really come up with any enormous moments, but he just played his role perfectly. And I think for Mitch Moses, he played the exact role that he needed from a hooker in this game. Um, obviously, once Connor Watson came to the side, that allowed him to play a few less minutes. But the defensive workload that he got through and just – I don't remember at any moment thinking, ooh, Reese Robson's gone the wrong way. He's made a poor decision. That pass is a little bit off. He was just fantastic throughout the whole Origin series. So he's my nine, Reese Robson. Obviously, Harry Grant, Ben Hunt, tremendous players that have dominated Origin for the last few years. Reese Robson, for me, was the best nine, and he was the perfect nine for Mitch Moses throughout this series as well, which is super important. Yeah, if you're if you've got a halfback like Mitch Moses, if you've got any genuine halfback, you have to be the right hooker for that guy. Mitch Kenny does a similar role for Nath Cleary at the Penrith Panthers. Robson played his role, picked his moments, just made the right decisions, got them on the front foot and defended well and got good service to his forwards and most importantly to Mitch Moses. That's all we needed from him. So Reese Robson, he's the nine. Edge back rowers. Once again, pretty easy for me. Angus Crichton, Wally Lewis medalist. We've given him a lot of compliments over the last few weeks. There's probably not much more we need to say about Angus. He's the obvious choice. He's probably the first pick player, to be completely honest with you. Uh, straight in on the left edge. Right edge, uh, look... Queensland, they had a couple of guys, but I think it has to be Liam Martin. He was fantastic. And I think this is a great origin series for anyone that's doubted Liam Martin. I've said for a long time, if you want to find out who doesn't know enough about rugby league, ask them about Liam Martin. If they tell you he's overrated, he doesn't work enough, he doesn't get through enough, you, you, you're not watching the right game. You don't understand what you're watching. This guy, his kick chase, his pressure, just the aggression that he brings. In the modern day, and people will say this is stupid, but in the modern day with all these guys and you see them all, they're playing on Friday night on TV, everyone's got a new haircut. Liam Martin didn't have a haircut for the entire Origin Series. That's the sort of fellow he was. I joke with Kat that he looks like the third stepbrother and I love it. The bloke is a lunatic. He doesn't care about anything else other than getting that W and however he has to do it he's going to make it work. Uh, obviously scored a very important try during the Orange Series come up with a number of big hits but it's the little things. His kick pressure, his line spread, that little bit of shit he's got in his game as well. Liam Martin he, he's on that edge and honestly if I have to hear anyone else ever tell me again that Liam Martin shouldn't be in this Blues side, I'm done. Pull the plug. It is over. Uh, lock forward. Really interesting. Game one, we obviously, I think it was Cam McInnes that started there for us. Uh, game two and three, we had Cam Murray come in there who did really well. He had great games. Isaiah Yo played that role a little bit as well. Uh, Cam Murray obviously got sin binned in the third game, so you do have to use that as a bit of a negative. I personally thought Pat Carrigan was really good throughout this Origin Series. He's another Queenslander I'm going to fit into this side. I thought he was fantastic. Uh, in a side that was beaten, in a side that was behind, uh, he was tremendous. He got through so much work defensively. He was fantastic. He gave them direction at different points. Uh, maybe it's a little bit harsh on Cam Murray, but I'm going to go with Pat Carrigan in this one. He also played all three games. Um, Cam Murray was tremendous, there's no doubt about it. He probably didn't quite have the impact that I thought he would. And when you're comparing the 13s and the the 13s, I probably slightly edged towards Pat Carrigan strictly in this series, but he did play the extra game and played huge minutes in it as well. So read into that what you will. Pat Carrigan, I'm going to pick him at 13. The bench, Jersey 14. And what I've done so far is I've sort of matched them up, you know, position for position and picked who I thought went best, which is why I sort of had Carrigan over Cam Murray when position for position, he played more games, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when it gets to Jersey 14, obviously Connor Watson is a, is a really good suggestion. Connor was really good throughout this Origin Series. I thought when he came on in game three, he was great. He didn't play in game one. Um, and game two, he really didn't have to do too much either. Look, Jersey 14, I'm going to pick another Queenslander here. I thought Tommy did, and God, he was tough throughout this Origin series. And I, I said it when I did my live reaction and everything. I reckon he was worth 12 to 18 points in the first half uh, for Queensland defensively. He was fantastic. He didn't stop going at the game the entire Origin series. Um, I'm going to pick Tommy Dearden there, and mostly because in game three, uh, if he wasn't on the field, if they had, uh, honestly, probably anyone else at 5'8", I reckon New South Wales would have scored a lot of points there. So Tommy Dearden, I'm going to have him there. It's probably a little bit controversial, uh, but I'm going to go with Tommy Dearden there. Uh, my last three bench spots. 
I'm going to go Spencer Lenu, obviously. He is an absolute must. I, I think there'll be calls from people uh, to have him as the starting front rower, and I can hear that, and I get you. You could say the same thing for Isaiah Yo. Because they came off the bench in all the games, though, that's where I'm going to pick them. Spencer Lenu and Isaiah Yo coming off the bench in Jersey 15 and 16. I'm going to have those guys there. They were just fantastic, especially in the uh, – obviously, Isaiah Yo was great throughout the whole thing, uh, and he played big minutes, and he played his role perfectly. He played less of a link man role obviously an instruction from Madge Maguire just play more as a middle forward and just go at the game and he did that and he did it perfectly throughout the Origin Series and I think it played a huge role in us winning Spencer Lee knew the impact he had coming off the bench he was like the boogeyman for Queensland they just couldn't go near him they couldn't keep up with him uh, the momentum that he created for the New South Wales Blues in so many crucial moments uh, was just huge uh, I was so impressed with him as I said I wouldn't have picked him I wouldn't have picked him for game one I thought it was a bit of a rogue pick I thought it might be come in for one game maybe have a brain explosion then fade out of origin how wrong i was he's in my origin team moving forward for quite some time spencer lean you a tremendous series jersey 17 we obviously had a bit of a rotating door policy with New South Wales and our bench guys. Hudson Young was there. Ola Kawatu was there. Mitch Barnett came in in game three and was tremendous. No one really jumped out of the ground as far as Queensland went. I looked at Lindsay Collins. I thought he was a good option. But this is where I thought, I know he only played two games. I probably have to put Cam Murray in here. I did get Simbin, which is probably why I didn't give him the 13 jersey. But I think you've got to have him in somewhere. His ability to just find his front on every single tackle, on every single contest is just unbelievable. He is just an absolute freak at it. I think he is the best 13 moving forward for the New South Wales Blues and you use Isaiah Yo as a middle forward. Uh, so Cam Murray, he gets a bench spot. So my team at fullback, Dylan Edwards on the wings, Brian Toto and Zach Lomax, Stephen Crichton and Hamiso in the centres, Jerome Lewis at 5'8", Mitch Moses at 7, Payne Haas in the front row with Ruben Cotter, Reece Robson wears jersey nine. On the edges, Angus Crichton, the Wally Lewis medalist, and Liam Martin. And Pat Carrigan, controversial one, gets jersey 13 for me. The bench, Tommy Dearden, jersey 14. 15, Spencer Lenu. 16, Isaiah Yo, And 17, played lock throughout the series, but Cam Murray gets a spot on my bench there for me. And if we're picking a coach... Well, this is where I'll gloat a little bit. It's an absolute landslide to Madge Maguire in this Origin Series. What he has done, the way he's brought this state together, even I loved, I love looking back at the Steve Mortimer stuff and how he inspired the squad through that. Game one, they lose a player seven minutes in and they show more ticker than we've seen from a New South Wales side in quite some time. They then come back and dominate game two. And you know what? Game three... They really put a Queensland on Queensland. Hang in, hang in, hang in the contest, hang in the contest. And then when the back end of the game comes, everything you did in the first 60 starts to pay dividends. And then they started to run downhill a little bit. A tremendous series by Michael Maguire. Didn't make a bad selection all the way through, in my opinion. There was a couple that he had to change and there were really tough phone calls he would have had to have made. And previous years when Brad Fittler's dropped guys, you've heard outrage and guys are filthy. Didn't really hear much of that outside of uh, Ricky Stewart having a little tantrum down there in the nation's capital but that hasn't really shocked anyone let's be honest here outside of that i think madge has handled this all so well uh he's jumped in the media in certain moments and picked his moments of, of when to sort of bite take the attention off some of his guys and whatnot i think he just played it perfectly madge and you know brad fiddler his first two years it was tremendous then people turned on him slater first two years unbelievable now people starting to turn on him hopefully madge he can sort of debunk that and he can just go into the future as a non-origin player himself coming in and doing what he's done absolutely tremendous so Madge Maguire he would be my coach guys today's episode brought to you by Neds jump on to the Neds app follow along with my profile all my bets and everything throughout the entire weekend and every weekend for the rest of the NRL season obviously guys prices subject to change gamble responsibly as always what are you really gambling with for free and confidential support Call the number on the screen or visit the website.